All right, you guys, this is Ross. Uh, it is springtime here in the Philadelphia area. I don't care what the groundhogs say every year. Uh, I can always tell that it's spring based on what my fruit trees are doing. When the ground starts to thaw and the soil is then workable, the ground is now warming up and it's telling these fruit trees, in particular my stone fruits, they're always the first to wake up, the first to leaf out, the first to put out their flowers and expand their flower buds. Well, then I know it's really spring and that this apricot tree here is in full bloom. Today is March 21st. I don't exactly know if this is an earlier date or a later date than normal, but usually right around the end of March, which it is now, or sometime in April, I would expect most of my stone fruits to be in full bloom. And these pluots, these plums, all the peaches on the property really will not be very far behind. The pears um, are not that far behind either. The honeyberries, the gumi, the apples are also not that far behind. Um, and to me, this can be quite concerning, but I think nature, guys, is really what this, this video is all about, is a little bit of a lesson on nature, is that nature is really a balance. While, you know, this may not be the perfect scenario, this warm spell that we've been having here in the middle to late um, section of March, we even had a really record high temperature of 70 some degrees in late February. You know, all these things add up, all these warmer temperatures increase the soil over time and tell these trees it's time to wake up, it's time to get going. It's not really the light, guys, it's really the temperatures in the soil. And this may not be a good thing for the fruit trees. Uh, and how this relates to a balance is that, yeah, it's not great for these fruit trees because now we could be seeing a late frost that comes in. And ideally, you would, I would rather wait and say, all right, well, maybe don't wake up. Don't put out your flowers until, I don't know, maybe after my last frost date. You know, my la average last frost date here, guys, is still 30 to 45, even longer, many days away now. You know, the average last frost is May 1st, May 15th, depending on kind of where you're at in this particular area in your microclimate. Um, so we still have plenty of time. And that last frost that could come in could certainly damage these flowers even kill all the flowers or even kill off the fruits that will very quickly in the next coming days be set. The bees are already on here. There's a nice bumblebee that just climbed onto that flower uh, and is doing its thing. You know, these fruits are just as easily subjected to a frost of about 25. We need a temperature of about 25 degrees Fahrenheit combined with a frost and we'll lose a very significant portion of our crop. Now that the flowers are fully open, it really depends on how further along the, the flower process is. When you start to see petals, that means a different temperature. When you see that the flowers now are fully open, that means a different temperature. Uh, and of course, this tree is now open. We still have plenty of time for a frost to come in, which I would not be surprised if we saw a frost or two between now and May 15th. Um, and now that this tree is, is really, in a sense, in jeopardy, in peril of me particularly losing, again, a good portion of my crop. So nature's a balance and that, yes, maybe the fruit trees here and the stone fruits, as an example, which inevitably put out their flowers just a bit too soon, a bit too early in the season. Well, this can also be a good thing for other aspects of growing food. And that includes the garden. So for me, I'd rather actually have a warmer soil earlier in the season because then I can get my garden started at an earlier date. And I think a lot of people neglect the garden this early in the spring, especially in the Northeast. Everybody's like here in the Northeast, you know, the, the summer comes very quickly and we tend to just think, oh, it's winter and then all of a sudden a flip is switched and all of a sudden it's summer. And everyone never realizes that, oh, spring is a thing. Spring does exist. <laughs> <laughs> here in this area and we just don't relish it enough we don't en enjoy it enough because we're not out here with the crops and in the seasons we're not in nature uh, the average person anyway and we don't get to really enjoy the spring but if you really understood how this is working and how you know have an understanding of nature you get to realize that oh well you know the fruit trees aren't going to do as well potentially with maybe a frost that may be incoming but the garden's gonna do great. And getting my crops in now, as you can see, well, you probably can't see all that well, 
is I have my broccoli here planted. And so the broccoli is going to do well and get off to an early start and enjoy these warmer soil temperatures. Although broccoli and the cool oven crops that you would plant here very early in March, typically like a colder soil, they do appreciate warmer temperatures at this time of the year. It's really those summer temperatures of 80 and above that they don't like. Uh, so this is their time and the more soil temperatures we can give them now, the better. So, you know, life is a balance, nature is a balance. You know, there's always a, a positive and a minus in nature. And, you know, that's why we plant so many different things here, guys. That's why we go through the trouble of having a diversity of our, in our yard, whether that's a diversity down here in the soil with different crops that we plant, not just the broccoli. I'm gonna be planting fennel and peas and all kinds of different crops. We're planting all kinds of summer crops. Here's my spinach that we planted in this section of the garden. But even beyond that, in terms of our fruit trees, because you know maybe we have a late frost that does come in and maybe our season is kind of ruined in the sense of those particular fruit trees that are hit. But then that's also why we plant things that ripen in the fall. So as, a, as an example, the persimmon is one of the last things to ripen here in my yard. Uh, so everything kind of works together in that, oh, maybe we have a rainy summer or maybe we have a rainy June. Well then, that's why everything in your yard different, ripens at different times of the season. That's why even you choose different varieties. Maybe there's disease pressure at one particular time. Maybe there isn't disease pressure at another particular time. So you plant all this diversity to guarantee that you're able to actually eat and enjoy the things that you, you grow in your yard, the time you put in, the care you put in, to make sure that you're actually gonna be able to enjoy this. So that's my little spiel here, guys. I gotta actually put the, uh, the load tunnels down here. It's getting dark I'm after work. And I just thought it's such an important talk to have, even for people who grow food. And you, know, you would think, understand what I just said, but uh, I feel like a lot of us, we do not, especially the average person that doesn't grow food. But uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon. I hope everybody has a great season and uh, plant some diversity. Take care, everybody.